happy Wednesday, everybody. Wednesday's a good day, amen? Amen. I like Wednesdays. Well, thank you so much, those of you who are watching at home or wherever you might be. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. It's awesome that we can connect in the middle of the week. Amen? Amen. amen. So, um, tonight... The title of my message um, is Healing is Here, and we just sang that song. So God was, had really been inspiring me about that topic, so leading in that direction. So I'd like for us to go that way together tonight. Um, healing is Here. I asked Pam to put a Christmas background because it's still a Christmas message. Amen? Amen. Amen. But if we think about it, we could say that it's easy to say, yeah, it's a Christmas message, but what does healing really have to do with Christmas? That's my question tonight, is what does healing have to do with Christmas? So the first thing that I want to put up is I want to reiterate something that Pastor preached recently in his message about the, he broke down the word Christmas, and he said Christ plus Mass, Christ or Christ must, um, Christ, as we know, means the anointed or the anointed one. And I loved how he put it. I had never thought about it this way, that it's actually a celebration of the anointing. I, I, when he said that, it just totally, like, it was like a revelation, light bulb moment for me. I'm like, and of course I know it's a celebration, but I never thought about it particularly celebrating the anointing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the first scripture that I want us to dive into today is Luke 2. Luke chapter 2, and I do want to read, I would encourage you to read all of the, um, that chapter, of course it is part of the Christmas message, um, but I would like to focus on verses 8 through 11. We know the, the verses before where they were going to, for the census. Um, that David was of the lineage of, uh, excuse me, Joseph was of the lineage of David and his wife Mary, they went to be registered. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit to verse 8, just giving everybody a second to get there. So 8 through 11. Uh, Sheila, would, could you read Luke 2, 8 through 11, please? I guess I could just read it off of it. Absolutely, whatever is easier. And you no. have it on your screen at home, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see his bigger words. <laughs> now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Then the angel of the Lord said to them, Do not fear, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And look at that. That's, it says, he said, I bring you good tidings. In other words, I bring you good news. That's what the gospel means. The word gospel means good news. So I want to reiterate that Christ means the anointed one. I think that should be up there for you as well. And I want to make a couple of points before we get into that scripture a little bit further. I want to make a couple of statements so that we have our foundation that this is why, this is our aim of getting into these scriptures. Healing is a part of your salvation. Amen? Amen. Healing, just I want us to say that together. Healing is a part of my salvation. It's not, it's not a, you know, let me pick the best. You know, you get like to customize your own package. You get the whole package with salvation. It's not just, of course, redemption from sins, most important. But it's everything, healing, freedom, liberty, everything that we need is part of that salvation for us. Amen? Amen. Salvation is the Christmas <coughs> message. That's why if you go to one of our services, you are still going to see an altar call most of the time, even on Christmas, even though it's about we celebrate baby Jesus being born. He came for our salvation. Amen. The good news of Christmas is this. Salvation is here. So we sang the song, healing is here in the message tonight. Healing is here. But it also could be 
uh, replaced salvation is here. The day Jesus was born in Bethlehem, God's plan for the salvation of all mankind began its final stage. Jesus would live a sinless life and die a substitutionary death and be raised again to glorious life. And God's plan was that we would inherit the full blessing of salvation to be made whole in our spirit, soul, and body. From the day of Jesus' birth right up until now, God's salvation plan has been working throughout the earth. And every tribe, nation, and tongue, God is still bringing his people to him. Amen. 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 He, they are being not only saved, they're being delivered, they're being healed and yes. totally set free from the works of the enemy. That is part of the salvation package. It's not just stopping at saying the sinner's prayer, it is the whole package, living a fully redeemed, set free life. People are hearing God's word and believing it and declaring how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, with power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That's based on Acts 10.38. See that? It says that was his mission. He went about doing good and healing how many? Some? All. all. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And salvation in every area is here for us. Whatever area you need healing in in your life tonight, I want us to believe that before we leave tonight, that it is mine. Amen. We have to believe that Jesus did not only come to save us from our sin, but to heal us from every sickness and disease. Yes. I believe that. I believe that with every fiber of my being. And I have seen God do miracles, um, even just a small personal. I don't want to say it's small. I shouldn't say that, God. Excuse me. I saw God heal Jonathan. He was only about Atara's age, um, like two or three at the oldest. And one day, just randomly, randomly, actually it was the day of his birthday party, literally his whole body broke out in a horrible rash. Horrible, like whole, whole body. Not just his arms, every inch of his body was covered in a rash. And it was so painful, he was hurting really bad, really badly. And I took him, as Pastor said, I take him to him right away. <laughs> I don't wait, I just take, him, take the kids to him and say, we need to pray. And he laid hands on him, and I like, I don't know why, I opened my eyes, like, right as he was ending the prayer, or even before he officially said amen, and the rash was completely gone. Mm. Completely gone. Not so just partially or in this far, this spot, but completely gone. Mm -hmm. So I've seen, that's just one example of, I've seen God's healing power work, and I don't believe that a rash is any worse than cancer or any of this or that. God doesn't segment things like we amen. do. He, we do. But he doesn't. So we have to believe that he, that he didn't come just to save us from our sin, but to heal every sickness and every disease. And I can back that up. Psalm 103. This is one of my favorite verses. Mm -hmm. Psalm 103. And I want to read 1 and then 3. All right, let's just read 1 through 3. Psalm 103. And uh, I don't think that's up there on the screen, Sheila, but if you could read it, if you have it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sheila's going to read that for us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Amen. 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 Thank you for emphasizing all. Yes. All. all. I didn't say some. All. 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 When we say that song, you know, you are my all in all. This yeah. verse. This verse. One more verse. Isaiah 53, 4. And these are just two references. There are so many to prove that God wants us to be healed. Some people, you know, we have that. Well, I don't know if he wants me to be healed. I don't know if it's his will. Well, then we need to read a little bit more. Isaiah 53, 4. Please, Sheila, if you have it. I do. As surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Amen. And could you read um, five as well, please? 
But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Amen. That is present tense. Like, you're not going to be healed. I am healed. Amen. I think even Pastor Sri says it. I were healed. <laughs> um, but we have to believe that, that even when we're praying, we're not asking for God to bring something and make it just poof out of thin air like a magician. No, it's, it's already in my spirit. I believe that my healing is already inside of me because the Holy Spirit, the anointing, Christ, the anointed one, who is my healing power, lives within me. So we're looking for healing to come from outside. He's looking for it to not come from inside, but to, I say, like, like, like a well. It's already there, and it's welling up and overflowing. So I want to just read a little bit of um, information. You should have that up on your screen as well. Some facts. I thought this was really interesting about um, Americans. Now this is not across the country. I think it was a study that our survey that was done with 1,714 U.S. adults that said nearly nine out of ten Americans have relied upon healing prayer at some point in their lives. Praying for others even more than themselves, which we know that to be very true. Sometimes we pray more for other people than we do for ourselves. Sometimes we often subconsciously believe that our prayers for others are more effective than they, than they are for mm -hmm. ourselves. And out of those 1,714 adults, it showed that 78.8% of participants have prayed for healing for themselves at some point in their lives and out of that 32 and a half or 32.4 percent do so often 87.4 percent have prayed for healing for others and out of that only about 50 percent do that often 54.1 percent have asked for prayers for their health like asking somebody else to pray for them 26.1% have given a laying on of hands for healing. So that's a pretty low number, like only about a quarter of those people that they have laid hands on someone and prayed for healing. And then 53% have participated in a prayer group, prayer circle, or prayer chain. So that's only about half, only about half. So I thought those were kind of some interesting st uh, statistics there to think about that most of those numbers were around 50%. Um, I think it's the higher numbers were the ones where somebody was praying for somebody else. So that could sh kind of show us that subconsciously we do sometimes have that um, thought somewhere down inside. God listens to my prayers more for others than he does for me, but that is not biblically accurate. Amen? Amen. If it works for you praying for somebody else, it works for you. Right. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 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 Amen. So I love this story. Let's go to Mark chapter 5. We're going to go, you know me, I'm Old Testament and New Testament. I probably should have texted Sheila my scriptures ahead of time. <laughs> She's well, like, jump, Bible jump, Chris, here. jump, Sheila, jump, Sheila. <laughs> That's true. I didn't know your Bible was here. Mark chapter 5. I think we're, we all are pretty familiar with this story. But it is worth reading tonight. Mark chapter 5, 21 through... Through 38 is what I have, yes. But I think um, I think I would like to go through 43. So it's a little bit long, so we might stop halfway. Okay, 21 through... Tw let's start with 21 through uh, 43. Okay. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. 
So Jesus went with him, and great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For he said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched me? Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that, had, that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. <clears throat> then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother and the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumai, which is translated little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was twelve years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it, and said that something should be given to her to eat. Amen. Amen. So uh, this, I wanted this to be our first scripture, because here you can see, and there at home you can see on your screen. So it's one thing to believe it. How do we receive it? So the best way as we can see from this scripture, this passage is by faith in God's word. Yes, there I have a list here of the ways that we see in the word. We have by faith in God's word, gifts of the Holy Spirit bring healing, laying on of hands. We have evidence of that. There's, those are the three main ways that we have evidence in the word of God. But the number one way for how to receive our healing is by faith in God's word. And I liked, I started to just write by faith, but God, I felt like God quickened me and say, you need to say in my word. Because that word faith can get very little to the left or a little to the right, if you know what I'm trying to say. So we have to say faith in God's word because she believed, she said, if I can just touch him. She's literally touching the word. Amen. And we are literally, we are too. Amen. I truly believe I heard something on the radio today. It was a reminder saying that when you spend time reading the Word, you are literally spending time with Jesus. We can't take that for granted that we're just reading the Bible, that we're just doing our devotions. We are literally spending time with Jesus Himself when we get into the Word. So she believed that. She believed if I can just touch Him. That's how desperate we should be to not only read God's Word, but to know it. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. It says He brings it back to our remembrance. Sometimes when you are sick, when you are hurting, those scriptures may not be on the forefront of your mind because you're in pain. At that point, your body, your, the physical part of you, is trying to dominate your spirit. It's telling you are hurting. This is never going to end. This is not going to go away. You're, you, you're not going to be healed. You've been praying for this forever. So we can't let the, our body try to come over and dominate the spirit, but that's why we have to say, we have to say the word, know the word, speak the word, eat it. It's like, a, I think it was Gloria Copeland, you know, she's big with the healing school. Um, she, her 
She said her prescription was if you're sick, you need to have your scriptures three times a day. And if it doesn't get better or it gets worse, double the dose. Amen. I like I liked how she said that. Double the dose. It's like the one thing you cannot overdose on. We need to, as much as we possibly can. So by faith in God's word. And verse 34, Jesus said to her, what did he say? Daughter, your persistence has made you well. Daughter, your faith. 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 Right? Faith. Your faith has made you well. Not, you know, how many friends who are believers you had around <coughs> you. Not this or not how many times you went to the doctor, which is fine. But he said, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed. It's a state. It's not just a momentary thing. That, oh, I got healed. It's not, it's not a, an event. Healing is not an event. It's a state of being. Amen. When we think of it like that, then you can already, oh, I'm already there. I am that. I, it's not, I got healed. It's, I am healed. And I also just wanted to point out that Jesus is fine with getting interrupted. He can heal somebody else while he's working on them too. Amen. 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 And God, I didn't have that on my notes. God showed me that right now. He said, I'm okay with being interrupted. And uh, I probably am the only one who can truly multitask. Right. He, he got interrupted. And if she had let that stop her, like, oh, you know, we also have that thing of I'm not worthy to be healed. Or it's, it's not, you know, my little cold's not a big deal. I shouldn't bother him with that. You're not bothering him. Amen. He loves Amen. us. He Amen. heals us because he loves us. For God so love, loved love the, the world, world that he gave his one and only God son. God. Not because he felt so sorry for us, but he loved us so much. And I love that when he got interrupted, he didn't, he didn't cast her off. But he said, go and be healed. He sent her on her, on her way. And then he also talked to the ruler. He didn't get mad at him for interrupting him. He said, don't be afraid, only believe. One, two, three, four, five, six words can change our whole life. Do not be afraid, only believe. He said, don't, why, why are you crying? Why, why make this commotion and we, the child is not dead but sleeping. I'm kind of glad I wasn't in that moment because I am so literal. I am so literal and so black and white. Like right now, if anything's on the shelf in front of me and it's off balance, I'm like, it drives me nuts. <laughs> me too. I'm so literal. Like you tell me we're going to the store at 530, we're leaving at 530. Like it's that. <laughs> so I, I'm glad I wasn't in that moment to correct our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but that is the best way because faith in God's word works no matter what your circumstances are. You, gifts of the Holy Spirit are wonderful, absolutely necessary, needed, but there are times where there is no one around you. That's right. There are times where you are by yourself, and sometimes even your own gifts, you may not be able to exercise them because of the level of your, your pain or your discomfort. So we have to depend on faith in God's Word even above that and even above laying on a pan. Sometimes it's wonderful when we come together. That's one of the reasons he says, do not forsake the gathering of yourselves because we need to lay hands on each other. I appreciate it so much when anybody does. I know here lately Miss Johnny has laid hands on me two times that I can consciously think of and it blessed me so much. And she didn't wasn't because I particularly said I need prayer for this or that. She just walked up to me, laid hands on me and prayed for me. And that ministered to my spirit and my soul and my body. I, I needed that refreshment. But we don't always have that. Yeah. So the best way, number one, is by faith in God's Word. A few more verses. Um, Sheila, the next two are going to be Exodus, chapter 15 and 23. Okay. <clears throat> Jonathan, you can check on Pastor if he needs assistance. Are we ready? Exodus 15, 26. Yes, ma'am. 15, 26. You said 23. Oh, 15. I'm so sorry. I meant chapters 15 and then 23. 
1526 and then 2325. Okay. And said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the, of the diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. For I am the Lord who heals you. Amen. I'm gonna, we can kind of move on through these a little quickly uh, for sake of time. Exodus 23, 20, this, I want, I'm giving us some ammo here, faith in God's word. These are some verses that, that we can claim, that we can memorize in our spirit. Exodus 23, 25. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Amen. Amen. Matthew 8. 16 through 17. Keep that in mind from that Exodus 1 where he says he will bless our bread and water. Just keep that thought in mind. Matthew 8, 16 through 17. Matthew 8, 16 through 17. Okay. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. Amen. Healed how many? All. All. All who were sick. And it says, actually, could you read 17 too, please? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Amen. See how that God always works Old and New Testament together. So it says, might be fulfilled. <clears throat> First Peter 2, 24. These are our ammo. This is our arsenal, church. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. You were healed. That's where Pastor gets his, I were healed. <laughs> he makes it personal. He says, I were healed. Not grammatically correct, but spiritually correct. <laughs> All right, 3 John 2. Third John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Amen. So that is God's will. Even if you literally only had that one verse to prove that God wants me whole and well in every area of my life, that's your one verse. Third John 2, that you may prosper in all things, all things, and be in health just as your soul prospers. Your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. And just to throw this out there, there is a huge connect between the soul and the body. Your mind and will and emotions, that, that kind of is a cross with your body because it has the mind connected in there. So that he says he wants our soul to prosper. He wants your mind, your will, and emotions to prosper. And then also your body and your spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. So... The last one is a little bit of a bigger one, but um, I want to focus on a few particular verses out of that, but it's Luke 16. Luke 4. 4, 16. Yep, Luke 4, 16 through 41, but let's get there first and then... think for sake of time we will stop um, at 30 okay. 16 through 30 but I would encourage you guys to read that whole passage but we can start with 16 please okay. so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, 
because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all who bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, It is not Joseph's son. Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me, Physicians, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Let's take a pause there just for a moment. Um, I want us to focus on how they were so marveled that is this not Joseph's son? Um, which, in other words, like, don't we know this guy? Yeah. Don't we know this guy? Like, it'd be like, you know, somebody, you know, like, what, what can they do for me? Like, what's so special about them? We should never have that attitude towards our Lord, yeah. ever. Right. We should never have that attitude towards Him. And even though we're not reading the rest of the passage, um, I do want to make a couple of points from the rest of the passage. The rest of the passage um, is about He casts out the unclean spirits, Peter's mother-in-law was healed and that many others were healed. That's very summing it up. But I wanted to say verse 32 says, They were astonished at his teaching for his word was with authority. That's why we should have faith in God's word because it has authority. Amen. That's the why. This is the what. Have faith in God's word. The why is because God's word has authority. <clears throat> no other word has the authority to do what you need it to do. Then verse 36, they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word this is, for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. So he stood over, verse 39, about the, he healed Peter's mother-in-law, he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. So we have to rebuke it. It says it left her, and immediately she rose up and served them. I love how Jesus gets you up and he gets you serving right on the, in the same moment. <laughs> and demons also, verse 40, 41, and demons also came out of many crying and saying, You are, even the demons said this, You are the Christ. You are the anointed one. You are the anointing, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Even the demons knew that he was the Christ. Mm -hmm. So tonight I want us to depend on Christ. I want us to depend on our anointing and believing in him and his power that he is our Jehovah Rapha. And that's going to be up yes. for you on the screen. Um, the meaning, meaning excuse me, of that word Rapha means comforter and healer. And our last verse for tonight, I'll read that one here so we can move quickly. Psalm 32, O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. Amen. 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 That verse can be so personal if we make it personal. O Lord my God, Psalm 30, verse 2, I cried out to you and you healed me. Yes. So I would like I to that. for us to um, end with communion. Miss Johnny, if you would pass out the communion, I'm going to have um, Pastor come back up and pray with us. Miss Johnny will serve our communion. Mm -hmm. I will. Yeah. Is 
same scriptures between Isaiah 53 and 25 and Exodus 15 26. This was the wrong list. <coughs> God has laid on my wife's heart. I think it's always uh, knowing the covenant is very important and living in the covenant and how God works in our lives and how God delivers us and sets us free in every aspect of it. And not only that, that walking in the healing that God has set for us, yeah. it's many times we miss out on it. We miss out on it that we have the healing as an idea, but not as a reality. In a theory, we believe in the healing, but when it comes to uh, fighting for it, we don't do it. But I encourage every one of us, like having and partaking in the communion is the most, one of the most powerful confessions you and me can go through. Amen. Because it sets us in a place. I still remember the day we were um, short on rent for whatever reason for almost $500. And we didn't have a way to make it. We didn't have a way to pay it. Nothing, you know, that in that condition, we would go to the Lord and we seek and we pray and we declare and we confess and all those things. And after that, we want to end it with, a, with, a, with, with our uh, um, communion. And uh, we were so poor that we didn't even have grape juice in our house. So, uh, you know, my faith raises up and I uh, bring a cup of water and say, God, you turn this water into wine at one point. So now I'm believing that this water is the wine. And we took communion on it. And glory be to God, um, less than, not even, I mean like, less than six hours after that, the prayer was answered like Amen. that. Uh, some, some strangers coming in that, at that time, um, coming in and saying, God is laying on my heart to do something here. You know, you attract things into your lives when we are walking in this covenant. Whether it be healing, whether it be the gifts of the Spirit, whether it is the, uh, the anointing of the Lord, or whatever it may be, it all be attracted. So it, it, that's why Paul clearly recommends us and commands us that do it as often. And even Jesus says the same thing to us, do it as often. Amen. So today I'm, I'm uh, participating in that covenant. And as we are all participating, believe in this covenant, believe in the power of covenant, not only for you and me, but also for the, 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 the land around us, the people around us, the nation around us. Particularly, I like uh, for us to be praying and continually praying with one of the major decisions that is happening on this nation, which is well, the Roe versus Wade thing. And uh, the, uh, the unborn children, unborn kids that are, you know, Remember, a nation um, cannot be blessed by the Lord if we appropriate killing them. That's right. We cannot. We cannot do that and we can and, and expect God's blessing. That's right. So fighting for it, and obviously when we are fighting for it, there is these, these the, the, the spirits that are going to be uh, uh, um, attacking so badly. Uh, continue to pray for those uh, Supreme Court justices so we may see uh, God's will prevail, which is life. Amen. 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 We choose life. Amen. Amen. As we are partaking in this communion, also choose life over Amen. yourself. Amen. You know why? God chose life for us. Amen. God chose life for us. He didn't choose death. In spite of sin overwhelming us, He didn't say, you're doomed to death. He said, you're worthy of my love. 
So let us uh, partake in this communion, having that faith that the healing of the Lord is going to work in our lives, that our lives will matter more than you and me can imagine. Amen? Amen. And I, I encourage you, continue to pray for these justices, even though they have made their judgment clear. They may have written it, but they have time till almost till summer where they can rewrite what they may have written. So far, the judgment, we don't know what it is, but they wrote something, most likely it is a, 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 a uplifting life, but if not, we need to continue to pray that the life will win over death. Amen. 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 Let's take it. Let's partake in this communion. Let us receive also in the healing communion. Let us receive also in the healing and the deliverance that God has laid for us. Do you want to pray? Yes. Pray with me. Father Hallelujah. God, thank we you, bless Lord. you, Lord. We thank you for, you said you would bless our bread and our water, Lord. Thank you for taking what we have, Lord, in our hands as we give it to you, Lord. Or even the frailness of our bodies, the frailness of our mind, our will, our emotions, the frailness of our families, of our finances, of our land, that need, we need your healing, Father. We give it to you and ask you to take it and bless it, multiply it. Make it be Jesus. fruitful, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for turning what that, we have into a blessing. Yeah. Into a Thank blessing Jesus. that extends so far beyond our reach, Lord, that we could ever think. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, all, giving us more than we <clears throat> dare to think, ask, or imagine, God. Amen. We submit this to you, Lord. We submit our bodies to you, Lord. We submit our minds, our will, our emotions. We submit all of our being to you and ask for your healing miraculous power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we bless you, Lord, for we have that covenant with you. Yes, Lord. That we don't need to do anything by ourselves. With you, we will do. Yes, Lord. Lord, we believe in your greatness manifesting in our lives. We believe in your glory manifesting in our lives. You have shined your glory upon our lives Thank this you, time, Jesus. Father. And we expect even more, Father. Even in our personal lives, I pray. Even it may be in the tangible things, Lord. May it manifest. And let it not stop there, Father. Go beyond. We want it to be manifesting in our mental realms. We want it to be manifesting in our spiritual realms, God, that we will be representing your glory in all realms, Thank that you Jesus. may be glorified in and through us, God. Thank and you. your will be done in our lives uh, as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let's all sing this one more time to end as our covenant confession. Liz, if you'd like to join me.